good evening to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. And on behalf of the organizers, Intelligent Destiny, the major sponsors, it's my pleasure and privilege to extend a very warm welcome and also give a big thank you for being here this evening with us. Because without you, this evening would have no meaning. When I was uh, called upon by the CEO of uh, Intelligent Destiny to do this interesting assignment, I was challenged and perplexed to know more about who this wonderful person is. And as I started peeling layers and layers of his life's history, I realized I don't have one particular answer to the question, who is this person? And then I said, is he a business professional? To a large extent, yes, he is. Is he a successful business professional? Yes, that's what he is. Is he a social philanthropist? To a large extent, a man with a big heart. Is he something beyond that? Well, he's an outstanding polo player, winner of championships. Is that what it is? And then we found that he had other layers to him, which put him on the Royal Air Force of the United Arab Emirates. And then, what else does he do? A hospitality major with degrees and diplomas from different parts of the world, and then comes back to ride the crest of success of the hospitality industry, with specific reference to the Al Haptur Group, which by itself is 40,000 strong, a leader in many areas, including hospitality, construction, education, infrastructure, and various other fields. And is he a doyen of just all these various initiatives? I found there's a warm, gentle human being, a wonderful family person. I was trying to encapsulate the essence of who this person is, and what better than probably in the words of Steve Jobs, who said that the crazy ones are people who are very different, people who want to make a difference, people who want to change the world. And I want you to watch that as a tribute to Mr. Al Haptur, which probably encapsulates who the man is we're going to talk Here's today. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. And I think that video captures the essence of the guest of honor this evening, Mr. Mohammed Al Haptur, the vice chairman and the CEO of the Al Haptur. A man who comes from a very illustrious family, but took to his passion, took to making a difference, took to being a little crazy in a wonderful sort of way, and thereby creating a unique mark for himself. And for the next 45 minutes, we're going to have a personal insight into this great human being. More than a great business person, I found a wonderful, warm human being. Somebody extraordinary. So without much ado, may I request the guest of honor this evening, Mr. Mohammed Khalaf al Haptur. Mr. Mohammed. Yes. I hope you don't mind me calling you Mr. Mohammed. Every wonderful story has a beautiful beginning. Tell us yours. Where did it all start? This person who has crossed all these boundaries, created this remarkable success story. Where did it start, sir? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank the SPI group for inviting me this evening. Um, <clears throat> let me let me start like uh, from uh, my childhood. Okay. So I wasn't really very disciplined person when I was a kid. I was giving a hard time to my parents among my brothers and sister. Not really being very bad, but being naughty, let's say it. <laughs> you know, you can call the kids naughty. So I was a little bit naughty. So my parents, they kept me closer to them. 
you know, to make sure that I stop being a naughty boy. And this way, I became closer uh, to them. And then they start like really directing me what I have to do. And starting from there, I've been like with them all the time. Even when they go for holiday, they take me. They, they, they leave the rest here. Because they know that my brother and sister, they're going to be disciplined except me at that time. So they had a reason for doing that. Yes, they had yeah. a reason. And actually, you know, every day now, when they look at my kids, they say, it's just like you. Comparing like father, to the, like son. Yes. So, uh, so we, uh, we, uh, the story is going to be long, uh, Professor, if you please, want me to say it. Please, we're all here to listen to that. When I finished my high school, my father told me, you have to go stay, study hotel management. But actually, at that time, there was nothing called Haptur Group. There was Haptur Engineering, which is the construction company, as everyone knows over here. And then there was the Metropolitan Hotel only, on Sheikh Zayed Road, which was built in 79. So I said, I mean, the construction was bigger. Why should I go study hotel management? Then I said, OK, maybe you know, he has a vision on something. So I went and I studied uh, hotel management. So when I went to study hotel management, I did only six months. It was in England. So he came, you know, he visited England uh, almost like six, seven times a year. So on one of his visits, he called me for lunch. He told me, so how was school? I said to him, I don't think I'm going to do good in hotel management. And actually, I was the first uh, Emirati to study hotel management at that time. Anyway, he told me, so what do you want to do? I told him, you know what? I want to be pilot in the Air Force. <laughs> what is the future there? I said to him, this is what I want. You know, that's my passion. He told me, OK, pack and take the flight tonight. I didn't even report to the school and tell them that I'm <laughs> dropping the course or something. So I packed and I flew in the same time. My mother, I arrived here. My mother was surprised, like, I mean, what are you doing? I said, uh, that's it. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to register in the army. Anyway, she told me, do what you want. So I went and uh, registered, and they ha you have to sign 15 years. And you cannot even exit. It's very difficult. So I did uh, two years in the Air Force, which the most important thing that I learned after my, me being very naughty when I was a kid is the discipline. discipline. We were like all of us, the officer cadets, pilots in the Air Force. We all in one heart. And this is actually what we implement usually with uh, my team in, uh, in the office. And also like with my family, with my brother, my sister, with my father, we try to have like all the teamwork for us to, to go to the uh, second step. It's not one person uh, decision. And when I left, it was a little bit difficult, so we had to involve many important people in the country here to release, to, to release me. <laughs> anyway, I left. I went to my father. I told him myself. I told him, I want to go study hotel management. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and I studied the hotel management. I went to England. I went to US. the US two times. And I met, uh, of course, lots of people in the hospitality side there. Some of them are in Dubai here because, as we all know, the tourism and hospitality in Dubai is one of the top in the world. It is, uh, I mean, top of the region and maybe top of, uh, in the world also. We have the best hotels in Dubai here. That's why everybody likes to come and work here. The facility, the services, there's nothing like it in the whole country here. So I went, I studied, I came back. The day I arrived, the uh, professor, ladies and gentlemen, I came on British Airways. I don't think there was Emirates at that time. I'm not going to say my age now. <laughs> So <laughs> we'll have a I, quiz at the end. <laughs> so I, uh, I landed. My driver was there, the house driver. So he came, dropped me. I found a note on uh, the door of my room. Say, meet me 8 AM in the office from my father. It was like by the time I landed, arrived to the, to the, to the house, it was like already 2 AM. By the time I slept 3, I mean, I don't have a switch. You know, take time a little bit to sleep, you know, shower, change. And jet lag. 
and jet lag and everything. So anyway, I slept, woke up. I was maybe half an hour late. There was no problem. I arrived. We hugged, kissed, you know. Didn't see him for a long time. And then he said, uh, he rang the secretary and told her, call me Rahim. At that time, one of our uh, executive uh, managers in the, in the company, in the hospitality side. So he came. So I met Rahim. Hi, how are you? Gave me a piece of paper. I looked at the paper. It says, one month cleaner in the housekeeping. Wow. Okay. Next month, porter carrying luggage. Wow. Second month, in the kitchen. And so on. I looked at him. I told him, are you serious? Of course, what I was expecting, that I will arrive, find like $1 million office, beautiful <laughs> secretary outside. You know, I sit there, orders, nothing of that what happened. I told him, I don't think I can do this. He pulled the paper, he told me, go find the job. And of course, down in the paper, it says 5,000 dirham salary. Wow. So I was like, okay, so I just left the office. I went back home to complain to my mother at Mom. that time. You know, they're always like, uh, Everybody goes to the mother. Goes to the mother. To put some, uh, how do you call it, wasta. <laughs> but, uh, Local wasta. But she couldn't. Because my father, like, uh, when you try to debate with him, he became, like, more arrogant in that thing. So my mother told me, you do it, and, and uh, I will help you when you need anything. <laughs> I said, okay. So I went to him. I told him, okay, I'm ready to start tomorrow. He said to me, one condition. I said to him, what? Again, what I mean, more? you have already like a big list of <laughs> conditions. swiping the floor and everything. That's, you know, <laughs> cutting onions. What more now? He told me, you have to wear a suit. You don't go with Kandora. Hotel manager cannot be with Kandora. You have to wear a suit. I said to him, I don't have suits. So he told me, okay, this is money, go buy suits now. So I went and bought suits. And of course, me being from Jumeirah, you know, you know how the local uh, boys, they came, they told me, oh, you're wearing suit. They started laughing at me. <laughs> like they took it as a joke. They come to the restaurant and they say to the waiter, call us that guy so I can take their order. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it wasn't uh, very easy. It took, took, uh, it took really one year and a half being behind the reception. I have people who are not happy. They come and they just swear at you, bad words. You know, I swallow it. I go in the back, start like banging the table, you know breaking a jar, <laughs> you know, just to relieve uh, the pressure. But, uh, but very important, if you want to be a manager of a restaurant, you have to start a busboy. You cannot come, say, I, w I am Muhammad al Haptur. I want to be a manager of this company. What do you know about the company? What do you know if the waiter is serving the plates right? Or if the food presentation is correct? And I wasn't happy at the beginning, but at the end, of course, I thank him until today for giving me the opportunity to do this from the beginning. Because if I came and sat in a big office, like $1 million office, I will be until today not knowing exactly what's happening under me. Beautiful. I think you started off wonderful. And uh, I'm sure that particular interaction with your father must have had some tremendous impact on you. Your father seems to have been a figure that guided you, that virtually molded you to where you were. Did you find it, you know, overwhelming at some times? Why isn't he allowing me to do what I'm supposed to do? Or did you feel that he's doing all this for my good? Any lessons, insights, father-child relationships? You know, I mean, my father was an employee in the 60s. If anybody read, read the autobiography of my father, would will understand his... Uh, his success and uh, how he started. So by him being employee and started his business in the 70s, and me come joining him in the 89 at that time, it's an old school thinking. But if you see that the old school thinking, they are the most successful so far. Absolutely. And we, you know, we think that we're going to finish uh, university and college and we're going to come and change the world. No, we don't change the world. We can add 